हेलो बच्चो सत्या नमस्ते फ्रॉम माय साइड सो आफ्टर लॉन्ग टाइम वी आर हियर ओके वी केम बैक विद द लेक्चर ऑफ द एटॉमिक फिजिक्स राइट सो द लेक्चर विल बी शॉर्ट स्पीड सोबर एंड एवरीथिंग सो आई थिंक लॉट्स ऑफ एन things are going to come lots of formulas are going to come into the very short period of time right so the agenda of today's lecture will be atomic physics right okay as the lecture would be small so uh, we are not going to waste time on it so let's immediately move on to the specific content right first of all we are going to discuss some things into the ncert and slowly slowly then we will go move over to the content and to the respective sums right <coughs> so let's the ncert for you all so that you all are aware of what things we are doing okay the concept of atom was given by first see lots of models see th this is the history that i am discussing now okay it was the myth in yesterday's lecture okay i was in the thought that yes student might be aware of this history you all are aware of also you all know about the history of the but it is a formality that we are going to complete okay don't get worried and again at the end of this lecture i am going to take 30 minutes to solve yesterday's question also and i am going to connect all of this with theories don't get worried right <coughs> Rutherford before Rutherford see first model of the atom was Thomson plum pudding model watermelon this thing you have learnt in chemistry i told you also the entire modern physics is a chemistry right okay the watermelon and the seeds kind of thing okay you have heard about the thomson the first model it was important to write uh, okay uh, to give the model of an atom it was important but lots of limitations were there into the thomson model right lots of limitation and here comes the rutherford rutherford was a person right who gave sometimes we can say the corrected model of the atom sometimes we can say the partially correct model of the atom why the model the experiment rutherford conducted for later on right uh, see uh, experi the this one uh, the experiment that was conducted by the rutherford that was the uh, bombardment of the alpha particles on the golden foil right and further those experiments were carried on right by davison and germer okay that is a different but we are not moving on to that right now because that thing we are going to see into the nuclei atom is going to start with the rutherford the same nuclei the upcoming chapter right that we are going to see tomorrow it is going to start with the rutherford both of the chapter atom and nuclei they are going to start with the rutherford in atoms we are having some classical theory of the mechanics okay he was a person who was a completely behavior believer of the classical theories right and uh, the nuclei in which we will be having some radioactive materials and all of those things right okay so in both of the chapters uh, many things are in common okay so this chapter atom is also going to start with the rutherford the upcoming chapter nuclei nucleus it is also going to start with the rutherford so rutherford was a first person he was born in 1871 this is a history what we are talking about the atoms right there are lots of limitations also but slowly slowly step to step we are going in yesterday's lecture that it was <laughs> recorded into the parts so you were not able to connect those parts 
everything was going on into the separate view okay but it's okay it's not a big deal we are going we are going to create a flow okay we are going to create a flow don't get worried so uh, see it is written on strudeford a former research student of jj thompson was engaged in experiments of the alpha particle emitted by some radioactive elements okay in 1906 he proposed the classic experiment right of a scattering of this alpha particles by atoms to investigate see now directly i am moving forward to this experiment what happened okay this is a good thing right this is the figure of a giger marsden experiment right uh, place in the vacuum chamber it's okay but for the reference we can take it okay apart from this this is a right a giger marsden experiment okay okay schematic diagram okay we are only interested into the alpha particles right the rutherford experiment rutherford uh, took a golden foil and he bombarded all of those helium nuclei the alpha particles only alpha particle is nothing else but the helium nuclei so he proposed okay as we have seen into the theoretical part see here okay in 1906 he proposed the classical experiment of scattering of the alpha particles by atom to investigate the atomic structure he kept a gold foil he bombarded the alpha particle and he noticed some of the particles after striking the foil okay you can just check it out some of the particles see this is the vacuum chamber but on the back side he kept one you can see some screen or something like that whatever you can see the important thing was the speed with which particles were getting striked they were returning back with more than thrice and four times of the speed with which they got incident on like suppose they are getting incident by v so they are returning by 4v 5v of speed they are getting incident speed by speed v meter per second right again they are getting return by 4v 5v 6v like that so at that point of time rutherford rutherford thought that there is something in mid between as because of that structure as because of that structure the particles are getting incident on it and they are getting back right they are recoiling recoiling is a best technical word recoiling back with the highest amount of this so it means that there is a something in between this was the reality of the experiment conducting so he said there might be some atomic structure this was the conclusion he let down all of you those who are watching this lecture come on everyone fast because he was only the person who gave the atomic structure yes it was with the limitations but 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 still it was with the limitations but still right if he wouldn't be able to give the structure na then bohr wouldn't be able to give the actual atomic structure if bohr right wouldn't be able to give the actual atomic structure then rest of the research would get failed okay so things get start things starts with the rutherford okay but okay so everyone is cleared about this golden foil experiment right conclusion of it there is something in bit between right and this was conducted to find the atomic structure okay previously thomson already gave the thomson plum pudding model he was a student of thomson but thomson plum pudding model was a very right it was not stable so it was completely rejected it doesn't actual defines the structure of the atom okay now with the rutherford okay after that giger's marsden and lots of uh, experiment went on 
blah blah this is a theory right and this is a trajectory of the alpha particle see you can see some of the alpha particles are returning at the very high speed okay due to the presence of the target atomic atom the uh, right atom nucleus is a center part of the atom okay so uh, here the word nucleus is used and previously the word atom is used right so this was a trajectory sum of getting crossing up okay the amount of the size nucleus was there from that part they were the sum of the nucleus the sum of the right alpha particles were scattering back okay so at that time rutherford thought Rutherford model was a complete classical atomic structure. Okay. Atomic structure. Now Rutherford proposed a model like in the center we are having the nucleus. Okay. And the electron is revolving into the circular orbit. Mark my words. This is a war. It actually isn't a war, but it is a war, right? Because these orbits are not circular, they are spiral on that basis, right? The theories of the Rutherford and the Bohr's were completely contradicting each other, okay? Rutherford model of an atom. Rutherford model of an atom. He proposed Rutherford model said that at the center there is a very huge particle. We can say it is a nuclei and the electron are revolving around it. This was the atomic structure. Electrons are revolving around it onto the circular orbit. This was the model right proposed by the Rutherford. Okay, so I must say, okay, at center. electron electron revolves around it electron revolves around it okay electron revolves around it so this was a mind blasting confusion okay Right, but again, this Rutherford model are were having some limitations and challenges. Right, okay. What were those limitations? See, now two things are clear. First, by experiment, one thing is clear that 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 something there is something in mid between. Okay. Second, on that uh, data, Rutherford obtained the model of an atom. In which the nucleus is at the center and the electron revolves around in the circular orbit. Why I am focusing more on to the circular orbit? Because this thing is going to get contradicted when the Bohr's model is getting, will get introduced. Right? Yes or no guys? Yes or no guys? Okay? So, again I am going to move back to the NCRT. Okay? Now, the Rutherford model states about this equation. See, you can write it down. The equation that I wrote yesterday. Mv square by R is equal to Ke square by R square. E is a charge on the each. Rutherford proposed that. Okay. Inside a nucleus, we are having proton. Outside nucleus, the electron is revolving around the circular orbit. Right. So, when electron revolves around into the circular orbit, if it is circular, centripetal is always there. How wrong he is moving, Bohr is going to clear that stuff. Right? So, as of that reason, he told that the electrostatic force between the center nuclei and the electron, right? Okay, it provides the necessary centripetal acceleration. So, as of that, the electron revolves around it into the circular orbit. This was the equation proposed. See, electron orbits, article 
and he gave the equation of kinetic three energies potential energies of an electron okay and the total energies of the electron again comes the bohr model of the hydrogen atom why suppose the nuclei is at the center an electron is revolving around the orbit see now first point if electron revolves in circular orbit if electron revolves into the circular orbit okay then it will accelerate and radiate the energy suppose the electron is moving like this way okay let us take an example right the centripetal is acting towards its center but whenever it is moving into the circular orbit okay it radiates some amount of the energy it radiates some amount of the energy and here things are going to get weird okay why the second point states if it radiates the energy okay if it radiates the energy then what happens right okay i am working hard i am working hard i am working hard i am losing up all of my energies i will get drained na i will get dehydrated okay so here if it radiates the energy the energy level of electron falls energy level of the electron falls immediately and as of that reason right slowly 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 it should get nearer to the nuclei okay it can't continue that circular orbit I am moving round, 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 okay, my energy is getting drained, okay, if my, uh, if I am continuously radiating the energy, okay, and I am getting dehydrated, so obviously the radius of the circular path will get decreased, na? if the radius of the circular path is getting decreased, it means going, uh, the electron is going to be near to the nuclei, okay, this was the limitation, as of that reason, the Rutherford model was unable to explain this model was unable to explain stability of an atom. This model was unable to explain the stability of the atom. Right? Yes or no guys? Okay. This was unable to explain the stability of the atoms, right? Now Rutherford fails and here comes the Bohr's. Okay. So this is what the history only half of the hour of the lecture has been gone and we are only moving forward to the history only. Right. Okay. We are only moving forward to the history. History. History starts with the Rutherford 
its experiment experiment gave the existence of atom after that he proposed a model right after that in this model he gave the respective equation okay and after that there are some limitations that we are we have discussed after this all of those limitations were overcome by bohr bohr's atomic model okay bohr said that bohr said that path is not circular path is spiral because many students also said that so this is not up to neat level are bhai it's not like that okay i am only the person into the physics who is interested in increasing your levels right okay so that's why i kept ncrt the model of the atom proposed by rutherford assumes that atom consisting central nucleus and revolving electron is stable much like sun planet system which model imitates however there are some fundamental differences between these two situations while planetary system is governed by gravitational force the nucleus electron system being charged objects it is governed by coulomb force i told you we know that object which moves into the circle is being concentrically accelerated the acceleration being centripetal in nature according to the classical electromagnetic theory accelerated charged particle always emits a radiation this is what the limitation of the rutherford model was that i already wrote before the energy of an accelerated electron therefore continuously decreases the electron would be spiral inward i'm sorry i'm not able to do this spiral inward and eventually fall into the nucleus thus such an atom can't be stable this was the thing that was uh, we already wrote here see is on continue the stability of the atom yes or further according to the classical electromagnetic theory the frequency of the em waves emitted by the revolving electron is equivalent to the frequency of the revolution as electron spirally inwards their angular velocities and frequencies would change continuously right so this is a contradiction to line spectrum second limitation the frequency with which revolution is taking place is matching the frequency of the emitted radiation this is the limitation according to the line atomic spectra right this was the niels bohr again everyone come on first sir give all of your knowledge us in one reel insta reel i saw one day before the exam the student was like my book was into the hand and he was like all knowledge should be acquired in my mind like that way so sir it was a niels bohr who did the certain modifications right and developed the quantum hypothesis he gave the three postulates okay bohr's model was also having the limitation especially the second postulate and it was covered by niels bohr now this is a important part of the chapter that we are going to deal right now 
फर्स्ट पोस्टुलेट बोर्स फर्स्ट पोस्टुलेट वॉज इलेक्ट्रॉन इन एन एटम कुड रिवॉल्व इन सर्टन स्टेबल ऑर्बिट विदाउट एमिशन ऑफ द एनर्जी ओके ही इज ऑल्सो नॉट ग्रेट ही इज गिवन लॉट्स ऑफ कॉन्ट्राडिक्शन राइट बोर्स एटॉमिक मॉडल इज ओनली एप्लीकेबल फॉर द आइसोलेटेड एटम नॉ वॉट एक्चुअल द आइसोलेटेड एटम इज ऑल अबाउट आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस दैट पार्ट like suppose if i'm talking about the hydrogen atom right okay there is one proton okay one electron revolving around it okay so this is only the certain energy level or in in some energy level only electron can revolve around into the circular orbit without emitting the energy in all orbits not possible daba dab daba dab daba dab but at that time right why this kind of theories were feeling great because uh, science was uh, having an advancements right into the theoretical part so it is revolving round 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 okay suppose here this is a ground state n is equal to 1 if it is revolving into the circular state then it is not possible that it can revolve into n into the fifth state it is not possible that it might revolve into the circular into the fourth state no this might be possible only into the ground state this was the first thing that was right this was the first postulate that was discussed by bohr the first postulate that was discussed by bohr postulate that <coughs> <coughs> this was a second postulate the third postulate states that okay suppose there are five energy levels four let's say n is equal to 4 n is equal to 3 n is equal to 2 n is equal to 1 right okay suppose there is a transition of an electron from this to this okay then it is going to radiate some energy how smartly he said he can electron can only revolve into the certain circular orbits right where angular momentum is inversely uh, is a uh, integral multiple of h by 2 pi if they are not certain orbits are not certain electron will have the transition to the ground state or to the certain from certain uncertain energy levels electron will have the transition to the certain energy levels wow <coughs> is this kind of a stuff that we discussed here yesterday or not it was related to history and i was into the thought that you might be aware of the history that's it guys okay i am not singing up the hindi song kaisa silla diya tune mere pyar ka kaisa silla diya tune mere pyar ka yaar ne hi loot liya okay so this was a third postulate okay he can have from the higher energy levels to the lower and on basis of this right lyman balmer passion bracket fund this series is are defined and the respective wavelength equations are defined i am going to discuss that also don't get worried <coughs> okay on basis of this i am going to discuss yesterday's numerical okay now let's move on to the some mathematical expression right of the bohr model okay yes before that what is an isolated atom bohr's theory is only applicable for the isolated atom what is an isolated atom if i'm talking about any specimen it is what not sure that only one atom will be there okay there are avogadro number of the atom into one molecular weight this is a chemistry part you all are aware of avogadro number of the atoms into the molecular weight of a specimen okay so i am talking about those stuff right okay suppose this is one atom
वट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ द आइसोलेटेड आइटम आइसोलेटेड आइटम मीन्स दैट no foreign forces are acting no foreign force suppose if this is a atom we are having the nearby atom okay nearby to the atom we are having the another one nearby to the atom we are having the another one so in that case what happens okay nearby to this atom we are having the another one so in that case what happens right the force of this nuclei on the electron this doesn't happens into the case of the isolated atom okay and bohr's theory is only applicable for the all of those see whatsoever the stable energy levels we are talking about now it only exists into the case of the isolated atom isolated atoms it means that right it means that only single atom we are considering apart from that into the space there is nothing apart from that into the space there is nothing right apart from that space there is nothing okay so this is the definition of the isolated atom now again according to the bohr's we are talking about those certain energy levels right if electron is revolving around it see again i am going to take yesterday we started with an expression right that this is a proton okay and this is one electron revolving around it okay i am talking about the hydrogen atom okay Uh, some of the scientists also state that neil bohr's uh, right atomic model is only applicable for the isolated atom and it is only just defined for the hydrogen okay not for others okay but but on basis of this the equations are different okay electron is revolving around it now okay okay let us consider this energy level is stable why because it is an hydrogen atom okay so this is the centripetal acceleration okay if it is moving on to the circular path then it is a centripetal acceleration okay centripetal forces now this centripetal force is provided by the electric static force that is attraction between the nuclei and the electron whatsoever the attractive force that acts between the nuclei and the electron it is only the force that provides the necessary centripetal acceleration from this we started yesterday fc that is equivalent to me <laughs> what is the equation of the mv square by r the same thing rutherford gave but bohr modified it mv square by r is the centripetal force now here we are having the charge on the proton is right 1e okay charge on electron is 1e this is a fundamental charge and that what we have seen into the electrostatics so it means that k q1 r square so here mv square by r that is is equal to k e e whole divided by r square one r will get cut mv square is equal to k e square whole divided by r everyone said to bohr sir your model is only applicable for the isolated atom and it is specified for the hydrogen bohr said no it is applicable for all all isolated atoms so what he did he introduced the atomic number z right depending on the atomic number like hydrogen helium lithium like that way atomic number increases right okay so he gave the general explanation rutherford only said this but he modified 
stable orbits because in any of the element there might be the stable orbit so this is applicable <laughs> Okay, so first equation was m v square is equal to right a uh, z e square whole divided by four pi epsilon naught r. Can I consider this equation? According to the Bohr's postulate, second postulate, he said that the electron that revolves into the stable orbits. Right, in which the angular momentum is an integral multiple of the this n will define the number of the stable orbit it can be 1 it can be 2 depending on that depending on the suppose if it is in hydrogen then we can have n is equal to 1 suppose if it is moving on helium lithium right okay then we are having the lots of orbitals in which we can fill the electrons so on basis of that energy level increases the number sorry the and number of the orbits increases the number of the stable orbits increases well, see i really salute to the what we can say the confidence of the bohr's right mvr that is, is equal to nh by 2 pi so can i consider this is equation number okay let's not make this equation number 2 okay let's make r as a subject it is nh whole divided by uh, m uh, v 2 pi okay i am considering this is equation number 2 replacing 2 in 1 right replacing 2 in 1 was was the one equation mv square is equal to z e square by 4 pi epsilon 0 r okay mv square is equal to z e square whole divided by 4 pi epsilon not r okay so i am replacing the value of r mv square is equal to z e square whole divided by 4 pi epsilon not r is n h right m v 2 pi 1 m will get cut right 1 v will get cut from this we are going to get the velocity of an electron into the specific orbit the general equation v is equal to right z e square into 2 pi whole divided by 4 pi epsilon naught n h. So, here v is equal to 2 pi e square whole divided by 4 pi epsilon naught h into z by n. Pi pi will get cancelled. <coughs> v is equal to e square whole divided by 2 epsilon naught h into z by n. This suppose if we are saying it as a v0, then v is equal to v0 z by n, right? v is directly proportional to z by n. This is the first equation of the velocity of an electron that is revolving around the orbit according to the Bohr. What is the value of v0? Value of the v0, right? That would be equivalent to after having the calculation, see this all are constant, E is constant, epsilon naught is constant, H is constant, right? So, it was C by 137 or 2.18 into 10 to the power 5 something, okay? I am not sure about it, okay? C by 137. C is a speed of light, 3 into 10 to the power 8 whole divided by 137. That is going to be approximately 2 point uh, something into 10 to the power 5 something. Okay. This V0 is constant in all. See, suppose if it is hydrogen. Okay. Now, they are saying what is the velocity of the electron into the ground state of the hydrogen atom. Keep Z is equal to 1, N is equal to 1. See. Velocity of an electron in ground state of hydrogen atom <coughs> ground state of hydrogen atom so we are directly going to use this equation v is equal to v0 z by n for hydrogen atom z is also 1 right and they are talking about the ground state so it is also 1 
okay so what will be the value v is equal to v0 that is going to be the speed of light by 137 now they ask us about right okay velocity of electron right okay into the first orbit of helium o2 he v is equal to v0 z by n helium you can replace and get the answers this was the equation of velocity for the isolated atom only like this we are going to obtain the equation of radius like that we are going to obtain the equation of time frequency energy magnetic field lots of things are there this is what i told you all yesterday and all of those sums were based on this formulas okay so the first formula we got it as v is equal to v0 by n but v0 value is this now suppose here i am making v as the subject suppose here i am making v as the subject v is equal to n h by 2 pi m r and i am replacing in the equation number 1 i am going to get the equation of the radius okay what was the equation number 1 m v square that is is equal to z e square by 4 pi epsilon not r right can i replace the equation of velocity m square n h by 2 pi m r n h by 2 pi m r that is equivalent to z e square whole divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r long long calculations are there okay so it went on mass n square h square whole divided by 4 pi square m square r square z e square whole divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r from this we are going to get the equation of radius first we got the equation of the velocity second we are going to get the equation of radius now see one mass will get cancelled right one four will get cancelled one pi will get cancelled and one r will get cancelled so we are going to have n square h square whole divided by pi m r that is is equal to z e square by epsilon naught can i make r as a subject r is equal to okay r that is is equal to n square h square epsilon naught right whole divided by z e square pi m i am rearranging the terms h square epsilon naught whole divided by pi m e square n square by z now this all are constant like we defined v0 here we are defining r0 r is equal to r0 n square by z the value of the r0 is 0.53 m strong Now we got the equation of the radius of all the orbits into the all atoms of the all elements. But only isolated. Huh? And this all energy levels more considered it as a stable. If they are stable then and then we all work. <coughs> we got the equation of the radius. Now see. We have to. Uh, see i have replaced the value of the planck's constant many students might be in the thought how you got value of r0 as 0.53 m strong i replace the value of h i replace the value of epsilon naught i replace the value of pi mass of electron charge on the electron and i got this value this is the standard we have already calculated first i got the equation of velocity v is equal to v naught z by n second i got the equation of radiation r, radius r is equal to r0 n square by z 
now you don't have to move on to what v0 tells us all about now you don't have to move on what r what is an expression of r0 you will get confused lots of things you have to remember you have to just say v0 c by 137 r0 0.53 armstrong What is the radius of ground orbit of hydrogen atom? R is equal to R0 n square by z. Ground orbit n is equal to 1, z is equal to 1. Okay, it is 0.53 m strong. Are sir, this is easy. What is the radius of the second orbit of the lithium? Wow. Lithium atomic number 3. N is equal to 2. R is equal to R0. Right? N square. 4 by Z. 3. So, it is, is equal to 4R0 by 3. Like this way, they can ask you anything. So, first it was the equation of velocity. Second, it was the equation of radius. Okay, now we are moving forward using those two equations. See, V is equal to V0Z by N. Right? Second, R is equal to R0 N square by Z. I am obtaining see if the path is circular then the time period formula is 2 pi r by v i am replacing those value let's keep 2 pi aside r is r naught right n square by z and v is what v naught okay z by n Two pi r naught n square by z, okay, into v naught z into n, okay. So time period is equal to two pi r naught by v naught n cube by z square. Again, this is a constant value. Right. So, I am naming it as a T naught. So, T is equal to T naught n cube by z square. This is an extra information. This is not given into the book. This is an extra information that is provided by me. If this is time, time period of the revolution, they can say now what is the time period of the revolution of an electron, right, into the second orbit of the lithium matter. We can also say double ionized lithium and lots of chemistry. If this is the time period, frequency will be inverse of time period, right? So, it is 1 by T naught, right? Okay, N cube into Z square, okay? Now, see 1 by T naught will be F naught. So, F is equal to F naught Z square by N cube. From radius and velocity, all of those things we are defined. We got radius, we got velocity, we got time period, right? Yes or no? We got frequency. Now let's come on to the acceleration. Centripetal acceleration or you can say, right, acceleration that is, is equal to V square by R. Okay, this is a homework from my side. This equation you have to obtain an answer beneath the video. Is this up to need level? Yes or no? Now you are hope so one hour we have crossed and hope so you are all are able to understand this stuff. <coughs> okay, this was the Bohr's atom. See, right? Directly I am going to write it down the equation of energy. Okay, the equation of energy is minus 13.6 z square by n square. Okay, in terms of electron volt. 
okay one electron volt is 1.6 into 10 to the power 9 is minus 19 joule this you all are aware of right this is the equation of energy so we got radius velocity time period frequency acceleration energy apart from this you can also have a magnetic field this magnetic field is an extra information that leads you all up to j this is for c according to the bohr transition from one energy level to another energy level okay transition from one to another right okay it happens c velocity of electron into the third energy level now check it out yesterday's lecture what equation we used velocity of electron into the fifth energy level will be what angular momentum is this what is energy are we having the equation of angular momentum that will be equivalent to mvr is equal to nh by 3 pi now check it with us check it out i want everyone ha huh? please after the explanation of the bohr expressions mathematical expression i want everyone to check out the previous lecture so that i want a satisfaction from all of your side right please so as of that reason only i have uh, taken this extra lecture speed of the electron is this what is the velocity into this in this way they are asking frequency time radius like that now values you all are aware of so uh, students it was all about uh, the atomic physics right soon we are going to deal with the nuclear part and it is going to come right so i think it's time to go right so this is your own physics educator indrajit singh signing off from the desk i would be waiting for all of your comments we need a video thanks 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 a lot right bye everyone stay at home stay safe see how the ms pandemic can take care